Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve problem number 1 under the topic state space analysis. Here the problem is obtain the state model of the electrical network shown in figure by choosing minimal number of state variables. So this is the given circuit diagram. So for the circuit diagram we have to create a state model. Right. So as we all know the basics of electric circuit, you see here we are having two loops, right? This forms one loop and this forms another loop. That is a closed path is known as loop. And how many nodes are here? Here totally we are having only one node. That is node is nothing but it is a point of interconnection of more than two elements, right? So this point and this point we should never consider as a node because here only these two elements are connected over here and again this uh, the loop gets over with this right so this is the basic thing we need to know and here let us move to the solution part so here the thing is the best choice of state variables are currents and voltages in energy storage elements so what are all the energy storage elements inductors and capacitors are known as energy storage elements right so here we are going to consider those energy storage elements as state variables right that is we will be considering the currents and voltages in the energy storage elements so here so this is the given circuit diagram and this circuit diagram we are going to fix the values of current by ourselves right so let this be the node a and i1 is the current flowing through l1 and i2 is the current flowing through l2 and i3 is the current flowing through this capacitor c right so here the state variables are current through the inductances i1 and i2 and here voltage across the capacitor vc that is this is the voltage across the capacitor right so these three elements are known as state variables let the three state variables x1, x2 and x3 be related to the physical quantities as shown. That is from the circuit we are taking these three values as state variables and now we are going to relate these three terms with x1, x2 and x3. Right. So here you see I1 is nothing but current through L1 and we are equating I1 to x1. Likewise I2 is equal to current through the L2 and it is equal to x2 and vc is nothing but voltage across the capacitor and here vc is equal to x3 right now we are going to consider our node a right to this node a we are having these three elements interconnected so when you apply kitcha's current law at node a what is the current law that is current flowing towards the junction sum of currents flowing towards the junction is equal to sum of currents flowing away from the junction so here we are having a node right node is known as junction by another name right so here from this node you see all these three currents are moving away right so you see i1 plus i2 plus i3 is equal to zero right and what is i3 that is current flowing through the capacitor can be written as c into dvc by dt right this is a formula current flowing through the capacitor is given by this expression and here plus i1 plus i2 equal to 0 right now we are going to replace i1 i2 and vc by x1 x2 and x3 accordingly so i1 is equal to x1 and i2 is equal to x2 and this differentiation term that is vc right dvc by dt that is vc is equal to x3 when you differentiate that becomes dvc by dt which is equal to here x dot 3 that is first differentiation of x3 is known as x3 dot right now we are going to rewrite the expression so when you rewrite this expression what happens c into dvc by dt can be replaced by this x3 dot plus again i1 is equal to x1 and i2 is equal to x2 which is equal to 0 right so here we are having that is c x3 dot i am keeping keeping this term on the left hand side and i am going to shift these th these two terms on the right hand side right so again 
when you move this c to the right hand side part this c occupies the denominator position so x1 by c here x2 by c right so let this be your equation number okay already i had given one so let this be your equation number two right now we are going to apply kitcha's voltage law in the loops right so this is our first loop right so our first loop consists of a voltage source resistor inductor and a capacitor right so here again we are considering the voltage drop across each element because kitcha's voltage law it deals that the sum of voltage drop across a closed loop is equal to zero right so here you see this is your voltage source and voltage drop across resistor is i1 r1 voltage across inductor is l into di by dt and here we are having vc right so again through this l1 the current flowing through this path is mentioned as i1 here right so when you apply kitcha's voltage law to this closed path what happens you see i am having an e of t right and here we are mentioning this minus plus throughout the um, circuit so here it that is minus to plus so e of t and again minus to plus so plus i1 r1 and here minus to plus so l1 into di1 by dt and here when you move right we are moving like this way so here it is moving from plus to minus so here we are mentioning it as minus vc right when you move this minus vc to the right hand side we are having an expression like this and the next one again for this expression we are replacing with the state variables so what are all the state variables here i1 is x1 right so di1 by dt is nothing but x1 dot and vc is equal to x3 right so just replace the term so we will be having an expression like this right i1 becomes x1 and this di1 by dt becomes x1 dot here which is and vc is equal to x3 right so here we are replacing e of t with the u of t because while representing in the form of state model u of t is considered as an input right so e of t is replaced with u of t here and again when you rearrange the expression you see i am moving these two terms to the right hand side so minus u of t minus x1 r1 so again we need expression for x1 dot so i am moving this l1 to the right hand side so finally we are having an expression like this right now we are going to apply kitcha's voltage law in the second loop so when you apply what happens again we are going to frame an expression here so minus to plus so vc right and here plus to minus therefore minus l2 into di2 by dt and here again plus to minus therefore i2 into r2 right so again when you rearrange this term you see i am moving these two terms to the right hand side so these two negative terms becomes positive here and again we are going to substitute the state variables so i2 is equal to x2 and again di2 by dt is x2 dot and vc is equal to x3 so when you substitute these values in this expression we are having an expression like this again we need only x2 dot so we are rearranging the above expression accordingly right i am moving this path to the left hand side and again x2 dot so i am moving this l2 this side so this l2 occupies the denominator part right so finally we had framed expression for x1 dot x2 dot and x3 dot right so equations 1 2 3 are the state equations of the system right you see we had written x1 dot x2 dot and x3 dot expression so again simplifying in matrix form so here in matrix form you see we are having x1 dot x2 dot and x3 dot right and here we are having x1 x2 as well as x3 right so therefore write a column matrix like this x1 x2 and x3 
and the next thing is here the coefficient of x1 is minus r1 by l1 so write it in the first place we don't have x2 in the first equation therefore it is 0 and coefficient of x3 is 1 by l1 right again when you move to the second expression there is no x1 term so here it is made 0 and coefficient of x2 is minus r2 by l2 and coefficient of x3 is 1 by l2 right and finally in x3 term you see coefficient of x1 is minus 1 by c and x2 is minus 1 by c that is no x3 term so here it is 0 right so after writing this you see here we are having an additional term which is minus 1 by l1 u so again we have to write it in the form of matrix right so we are having only u term in the first expression, no u terms in the second and third, right. So, you see here we had written as coefficient of this u is minus 1 by L1. So, minus 1 by L1 and no u term in the second expression and no u term in the third expression, right. And this minus 1 by L1 gets multiplied with u. So, therefore, here u is represented as a 1 cross 1 matrix, right. Am I making the concept clear? Just from this expressions, we are framing the matrix. That's it. Right. So, the next thing is, we are going to frame the expression for output equation. Right. So, let us choose the voltage across the resistances as output variables. Right. So, what is the voltage across the resistance? So, you see, here we are having totally two resistors. Right. So, R1 and R2. So, voltage across R1 and voltage across R2 are considered as outputs here, right. For framing state equations, we are considering only energy storage elements. Here, energy storage elements are L1, L2 and C, right. Therefore, the output equation is derived from the resistors. Here, we are having two resistors R1 and R2. So, let Y1 is voltage drop across resistor R1. So, it is I1 R1 and Y2 is voltage drop across resistor R2. So, here it is I2 R2. Again, we are replacing I1 and I2 by state variables. Here, I1 is equal to X1 and I2 is equal to X2, right. So, again, when you represent these two expressions in matrix form, you see Y1 and Y2 here and here we are having R1, right. The first expression has only R1, no R2. Therefore, R1, 0. And second expression has only R2, no R1. So, 0, R2. And this gets multiplied by X1 and X2. Right. So, this is known as output equation. And the previous matrix we framed gives the state equation. Right. So, here both these equations contribute to the state model of the system. Right. So, finally, this is the end of the problem. If you have any doubt, let me know in the comment section. Thank you.